Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, if you guys have been around this channel for a minute, then you may know that I'm not just a fan of doll repainting and doll repaints, but I am also a fan of Monster High dolls in general, specifically their designs. Um, I just think that there are some designs from Monster High that are some of the coolest fashion dolls like I've ever seen. Um, and one of those dolls that I just have been wanting to repaint and wanting to pick up for a while is Avia Trotter. It just blows my mind that there's like a centaur fashion doll. I don't know. I just think that's amazing, especially when I think about the dolls that were around when I was younger. It was just like slim pickings, honestly. It was like, do you want Barbie or Barbie? Or would you like Barbie? Like Barbie was it. Like I feel like that's the only doll that was around when I was younger. It's just amazing how things have evolved since then. Anyway, what are we doing with Miss Avia Trotter? We are going to be turning her into a Celestial Galaxy Unicorn Pegasus. By the way, I want to mention, I can't remember if I was inspired by this person or if I saw the repaint and I was already working on this doll. My brain is mush lately, okay? <laughs> um, but Valkyrie's World has a really cool cat galaxy doll and I will link it down below if you guys want to check it out. The joints on this doll are really kind of awesome. Um, she has a chest joint, which is rare for a Monster High doll, and the front legs are fully articulated, so at the knee and the hoof, but the back legs aren't at all. I think it would have been pretty great if they went the extra mile and articulated the back legs, but what you gonna do? On to the prepping. So I cut all her hair off. I dunked her head in hot water, just heats up the vinyl of the head so that it's easier to pop her head off. With a screwdriver, I scrape that around the inside of her head to get all the glue gunk out. I then pull all that gunk out through her neck with needle nose pliers. To get all the paint off her face, I'm going to be using 100% acetone nail polish remover and I'm just wiping her face off with a cotton round. I paint over her already blue scalp with a darker blue. You do this in case there's any gaps in the reroute. It just makes her hair look uh, less bald. For hair, I'm using the Doll Planet's Midnight Blue, and I want to mention something about the Doll Planet's hair. I've heard a couple customizers say that they find the Doll Planet's hair to be hard to work with because it's slippery. And while I am not personally of that opinion, um, I like the Doll Planet's formula of hair. They have a new, I mean, it's pretty new. I think it came out a couple months ago, a uh, formula of hair called the Doll Planet Plus DG. They've replaced most of, if not all, I think you can still get maybe a couple things of the old hair on their Etsy, but they've replaced most of it with this hair. And what I'm trying to say is if you guys found their old hair type, hard to use, I think you would probably like this new one um, because it is significantly different and it is, uh, I could see people finding it easier to use. So that's all I'm trying to say. That's my little PSA about the doll planet. I skipped a lot of that rerouting process, but I just looped the hair around my reroot tool, plunged it into the head and squeezed Fabri-Tac glue in through the neck hole. To get the hair to lay a little bit flatter, I boil washed it. On to her face up. So I spray the doll three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask. And then we get to working on her face. I started out with her eyes and something that I like to do when I'm starting a face up and I'm kind of unsure of what direction to go in in terms of an eye shape, whether I want to make them big or small, is I'll look at past face ups that people have done and sort of just see which ones I prefer and kind of what size the eye shape is. I noticed from looking at a lot of Avia Trotter face ups that I did prefer when her eyes were smaller, so I sketched in her eyes smaller than the eye mold.
This pencil that I'm using for the white of the eyes is actually the Prismacolor uh, white watercolor pencil. And I want to mention, I got a pack of these and I'm trying them for the first time in this video. And they are like the formula is lovely like the colors are rich they also have like a nice variety of colors and at least in the pack that i bought um they're pigmented they're like beautiful however <laughs> they are some of the most difficult pencils that i have gotten to sharpen i have a variety of pencil sharpeners and these crumbled in like each one of them also they broke my electric pencil sharpener like which is the pencil sharpener that i grab when i just cannot get a point on a pencil i'm gonna pick up the prismacolor pencil sharpener because one would assume that would work right <laughs> um and i just want these to work so bad because the formula is lovely but I just can't use little nubbins, okay? It's not how I work. It is not, it just does not work out with little tiny details when you use little nubbins. So sharpen your pencils, folks. To shade around her face, I'm using deep purples and fuchsias. I add tones of blue around her forehead, her eyes, and her lips just to create a feeling of depth in those areas and to make her skin look like it has layers to it. Another thing that I like to do to add a feeling of layers to her skin is I add veins around her eyes and her forehead and they're just branch like pencil marks in those areas. I'm using a darker blue than I normally do because her skin tone may not look it, like it looks kind of pale here, but it is sort of like a deeper, like a really deep purple, but it is kind of a deeper purple. So I just wanted them to show up on her skin tone. For the eyes, I gave her a greenish blue color. I brighten up her waterline with a highlight of a light beige pencil. To create a gradient in the eye, I'm taking Q-tips and blue pastels, and I am just sort of tapping that onto the eyes. This just is an easier way, in my opinion, to make a gradient for the eyes instead of working purely with pencils, because with pencils, you kind of have to like layer them up and layer them up, whereas pastels blend, in my opinion, a little bit easier. With a deep purple pencil, I'm going around the lines of her face and deepening them up and redefining them. For brows, I wanted to give her like deep, thick blue eyebrows because I thought they would balance out her face. I sketched in her pupils with a deep blue watercolor pencil and then I took a Q-tip with purple pastel on it and I tapped that on top of the pupils to sort of blend them out so they're not quite as harsh. Thank you. 
After all the shading we've been doing, I'm bringing back some highlights around her eyes and her lips with a white watercolor pencil. With light blue watercolor, I add a ring of highlight around her iris. I wanted to give this doll an eye makeup design that's going to be mimicking the galaxy texture that we're going to be putting on her body. So I'm tapping red watercolor onto the outer portion of her eye, sort of in a wing. I tap white and red metallic watercolor on top of that. I do the same exact thing on the other eye, but I'm doing it in a green version. I go over the brow hair with blue watercolor just to sharpen it up. I'm tapping Purple Pearl X pigment on the inner and outer portion of her eye just to give her kind of like a duochrome eyeshadow look. I add a highlight of metallic gold watercolor on the left part of her pupil. I love metallic. If y'all haven't like tried out the Arteza metallic watercolors, honestly, like they're so good. Like I'm not even kidding. Like there's, I use them so much. To give her lips a wrinkly look, I add white lines to her bottom and upper lip. Lately I've been trying to, I guess, try harder with my eyelash game when it comes to dolls. So I'm going over the lines that I originally put down on the first layer with a black uh, watercolor pencil. And I'm just been trying to make them more curved or just really examining eyelash anatomy, I guess. Which if you guys are having trouble with any part of a doll's face up, I really just recommend staring at faces <laughs> it just really helps or at least that's something that helps with me I go over the lashes that I put down with watercolor pencil with wet watercolors um, and this just deepens them up and makes them darker.
I tapped a bit of metallic duochrome purple watercolors on top of her pupil. With Derwent Metallic Purple Watercolor Pencil, I am flicking a couple of lashes on her outer lashes. This just sort of creates a black to purple fade that in my opinion looks really cool on the lashes. I'm adding in the last stages of highlights to her face, which is basically just white dots around her eyes and her lips and her cheeks. An effect that I've been really liking with my Monster High repaints lately that I've been adding to a lot of the most recent ones is I add a little bit of metallic watercolor to the outer lashes, um, just a couple flicks of it. In this case, I'm using blue, but it like varies with whatever repaint I'm doing. Um, and I just love the look of metallic watercolor on top of black, so I think it looks really nice. As a last step to this repaint, I add a bit of Vallejo gloss to her lips. This is how she turned out. Avia Trotter is definitely not one of my favorite molds to work on, but I think she turned out pretty cute regardless. Moving on to prepping the body. So she had like these marks on her body that I'm trying to take off. I tried at first to take them off with non-acetone nail polish remover, but they just weren't budging. So I ended up going in with acetone nail polish remover and going over them. And of course they came off, but it did melt the plastic, which we're going to be sanding down so it's smooth again. I gave her some new arms and hands that I had laying around in my stock box. They're like truly a Frankenstein. I think it's like Frankie and Gulia's upper arms and then some ever after high hands. I use pliers to get this like tail thing that she has going on out. It just took a little bit of finagling, but it did eventually come out. When I sanded her body, it created this ashy look because her plastic on her body is a darker color. So I'm going over that with my Vallejo matte varnish. This doll is like a centaur harpy doll, so she originally had wings, I don't have them, um, but I'm filling in the hole that she has on her back for them with epoxy sculpt. Since her lower arms are all sorts of crazy colors, I am going to be painting them with lavender acrylic paint. On to the galaxy. So I am painting a galaxy on the horse part of her body and painting galaxies is like one of my favorite things to do. I just really like doing it. I'm creating a gradient with tones of pink, purple, and blue, and I'm not overly concerned with this initial base color blending too much. The reason why I wasn't overly concerned with my 
gradient blending is because we're going to be taking a crumpled up tissue and I'm going to be double dipping into white plus whatever color block that I'm on. So in this case, it's pink. So it's going to be white and pink and I'm tapping that down and the colors will naturally kind of blend together whatever colors you have on the tissue. Um, so this is going to be creating that galaxy texture and it's just a really easy method to create a galaxy texture if you guys have never tried to create one. Once I got that texture to be as galaxy-like as I wanted, I took a fan brush and watered down white paint and I flicked some little speckles on there. I also added some stars that are sort of in the shape of a T or a cross and little clouds. I wanted to paint her hoofs a color so that you could like differentiate them from her skin because they're like all one color, so I'm painting those black. Onto the wings because she's a pegasus so she needs some wings so I sketched out the like general shape of the wings that I wanted like kind of as a pattern to follow and I was originally going to make these out of warbler but I decided it was like too stiff and thick so I went in with foam and I cut out a bunch of little like wings and stuff and I was going to use this um, and to be honest I think this looks okay like this is definitely an option if you want to make a pegasus doll. But then I remembered that a year ago, I bought a bunch of My Little Ponies literally to harvest their body parts. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm snatching up her wings. I'm very sorry, ma'am. Um, <laughs> I am going to be also articulating them in the same way that they are on this My Little Pony so they can go back and forth. How we're going to be doing that is I am taking my Dremel tool and I'm just drilling a really big hole into her back. When I put the wings into the hole that I created, they were kind of flopping back and forth, so I needed something to stabilize them. So I'm going to be stuffing tinfoil into the body, and then once I have enough tinfoil in there, to kind of have something that the wings can grab onto, I put a bit of hot glue coated on the inside. Jumping back to painting the body, I wanted the body to be metallic um, or just to have metallic elements to it, of course, because I'm obsessed with this Arteza metallic watercolor paint. So I'm taking some purples and also some reds and some mints, and I'm just tapping that in the various color blocks that we put down originally. I also went over her hoofs with some metallic purple watercolors. I think the body turned out really pretty. It's also not done yet. I'm going to add sparkles too, but I really like it so far. To blush her body, I use the same tones that I used in her face, so blues, purples, and pinks. I add white dots to mimic the splatter texture that she has on the horse part of her body. I wanted the wings to be more purple toned as opposed to a pink, so I went over them with a purple pearl X pigment. I add dots of green and pink metallic watercolors to the wings. Then 
These are the wings when they're finished, and they're so pretty. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but like, they're so pretty. I also put her head back on. With various assortments of chunky and finer glitter as well as glue, I am adding glitter to her body and the wings and also a little bit to her cheeks on her face. On to the horn. So of course she needs a horn because she's like a unicorn, pegasus, galaxy, princess, queen. Um, and I'm using Sculpey. This is actually my first time using Sculpey and I must say I really dig this stuff. But um, I rolled it out into like this like thin little noodle and I'm making it thinner at the tips and then I twirled it around. I made a couple different horns just to have variety and have some to choose from. And honestly, like they're just beyond easy to make. By the way, if you guys can hear my cat purring, I'm sorry. He's purring very loud and I just don't want to move him because he's an angel baby. But um, I popped these in the oven and I picked which one I like the best and then we painted it. And I'm painting it in the same sort of gradient, like with the same colors that I used on the body. I went over each one of those colors with a bit of metallic watercolors because... They the real MVP of this of all of my dollar paints, honestly. Um, and then I hot glued that horn in place. Since the hot glue is not a very stable, you know, glue, it's not like it doesn't hold super well. I went over the glue with a little bit of epoxy glue. Now to add all of the glitter in the world. So I wanted her to have like a glittery base to the horn. So I'm taking some Elmer's glue and I'm just laying that down and then I'm going over top of it with various sparkles. I also add a little bit of rhinestones to her horn just to jazz it up. Moving on to hair, so I cut her hair quite a bit shorter because I didn't want her hair to be blocking the galaxy paint that she has on her horse body. I smoothed the hair back out with a bit of pomade and added some braids. To make the braids lay specifically where I want them to, I pin them in place with a needle. I got these iridescent star beads off Amazon and I wanted to add them to her hair. So I took a strand of it and I put the bead on the strand and then I tied a knot at the end so that the bead would stay in place. Onto her tail. So I took that midnight blue hair that I used for her head and I took a lock of it and kind of rooted it into her butt. Like I'm just pushing it into the hole in her butt. Then I just gave her a cute little braid. Onto her clothes, which she's really not wearing a lot of them, but I took this fabric that you guys may recognize from my intros. 
Uh, I took two little like holographic bits off of it, like a little holographic diamonds, and I folded them in half and I created a top with it. I sewed two pieces of embroidery thread at the ends of the top to create a tie, and then I sewed the two pieces of the top together at the middle of the front and hot glued a gem on top. I wanted to give her a kind of, okay, I don't know how to describe this other than like a tutu bracelet, which you guys will see what I'm talking about in a minute, but I gather stitched a strip of tulle and I sewed that gather stitch strip to a ribbon. I made one of these for each of her arms, her legs, and her tail. With a strip of vinyl, I hot glued that around her leg. I also wrapped a bit of tulle around the ends of her braids and hot glued those in place. I scrunched up some tulle and pinned that around her ears and hot glued some gems on top. As a final touch, I took some of my finer pink glitter and chunkier purple glitter, mixed it with glue, and put that down the middle of her hair. And with that, she's done! Oh my goodness. I kind of, I do like how she turned out. Um, I think that Avia Trotter, like I said earlier, is not one of my favorite sculpts, but I think that she's such a unique, awesome doll. Like, she's a centaur fashion doll, which I, again, I think is like the coolest thing ever. I also have sort of a special thing for centaurs. I don't know, I've just been realizing that as I've been collecting BJDs, I just get very excited when I see centaur BJDs. So seeing a centaur fashion doll, I'm like, oh my god. So if you guys don't have her, I think she's kind of awesome. Um, I would recommend finding you an Avia Trotter <laughs> to customize because it was really fun customizing her. I think that she turned out pretty cute. Let me know what you guys think about her down below. I also think that she fits in well with my little fantasy crowd that I've been building up. Um, I also wanted to mention something. So you guys may know my Harpy doll. Um, something very strange happened to my Harpy doll recently, which I'll be showing you guys. Um, her face is yellow. Like what, ma'am, what happened? <laughs> I like, don't understand. Well, I kind of do understand. What I think happened is I painted her face brown with some Vallejo game air paints and the doll was like in the sun, but like not really in the sun. Like I wasn't putting her outside and baking her or anything. Um, and I think that that paint just really yellowed from her being in the sun. So I'm gonna have to give her a makeover or just a new face up at some point. But anyway, I just want to show you guys. Maybe you guys can give me some insight on it. Maybe you've used the Vallejo game air paints and you can make me further understand what's going on with this doll. Um, maybe it's something else. She, I do use, as you may know, the UV cut MSC. So she should have some sort of UV protection on her face, but I guess um, it didn't quite help her out because her face looks crazy. So like this video if you like this video. Subscribe it makes me happy and I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. All right, be safe. Bye-bye.